Lord birthed this movement in such a dark season uh, uh, of, of loneliness, of heartache, of lockdowns, of fear. Right. You know, uh, suicide rates were exploding, drug and alcohol use was exploding. And so whenever you bring the gospel, the good news of the gospel into that, into that context, it just thrives. And people that had never stepped foot in a church or people that, you know, we had, we had guys in cities that were about to commit suicide. They would run down to the altar and throw their drugs down. People that, you know, that, that, that had never heard the, the preaching of who Jesus was, you know, get saved. We had drug dealers in Chicago, you know, throw fanny packs of heroin on the stage. I mean, we had so many wild testimonies. And then we baptized a ton of people, you know. The baptismal thing was a huge part of what we did as well. We now, ended every plan, service that way. Did you think you were going to do that from the beginning, or did that just sort of come up and we need to get these you people know, baptized? You know, it actually started in New York City. We were in Washington Square Park, and this guy, uh, this Guatemalan uh, 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 guy was walking through the park, was, was depressed, was going to go kill himself. He heard the music, he came, he heard, he heard me speak, he came down the altar, give his life to Jesus. And then he was like, and he looked at me and he was like, well, now I, I need to get baptized. That's what we do next, right? Right. And I was like, right, okay. <laughs> and then I looked behind me and the fountains in Washington Square Park were yeah. on. And so I said, let's just do it in the fountain. Yeah. And so he was the first person we ever wow. baptized. And from that moment on, we just knew, you know what, we're going to have to do this ready. every city. You've kind of gotten involved. You've become kind of an icon for people to stand up because of what you've done going across America. People are, they see what you did in the midst of COVID and your know, rules and not gathering and cordoning off parts of the parks where you can't get to. You know, we've seen all kinds of crazy news stories. So, but now, what do you, what's happening now? for Sean Foy. What's happening yeah. now with this movement that you really birthed? Well, I feel like, you know, uh, I really believe that we have to move into a season of, of revival where we, you know, we, we press through the resistance <clears throat> on all those different layers. Right. And now I feel like we got to keep putting our foot on the gas and we got to go, you know what? We're not just content telling the government we're going to have church or telling these yeah tyrannical leaders, we're going to have church. Yeah, we're going to have church. We're not just going to have church. We're going to take the whole city. Yeah. You know, we're going to go into Seattle, like, like our plans in 2022. You know, we're going into some of the bluest, hardest cities in America that, to be honest with you, a lot of conservatives don't have hope for and Christians don't want to be in. And yeah. I'm, I'm like, no, we have a mandate. You know, we have a mandate to rebuild broken places yeah. and restore ruins long devastated for generations. Now more than ever in those cities, people are so filled with hopelessness. They're looking, they're looking for salvation. And so we want to go, you know, in 2022 and mobilize evangelists, mobilize people right. with acts of kindness and love to feed the poor, to help those that are, that are drug addicts, you know, to, to unite churches together. I mean, we got to have the body of Christ together. Yeah. You know, if we're going to do this. So that's a big part of our heart in this season is to, is, 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 you know what? We felt like we broke through that wall of resistance, but now we want it all. When we see revival, history shows us revival happens in the middle of the worst of times mm -hmm. and, and then in the worst of places, mm -hmm. where, whether it was the Welsh revival yeah. or even Azusa, what was going on in the middle of mm -hmm. the great earthquake of 1906. Yeah. I mean, a lot of disaster was happening and we saw a revival. So I, we applaud you for going to these blue states because they are the ones a lot of people have given yeah. up on. And yeah. so going there, proclaiming Jesus, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Well, I appreciate it. I, I, I really feel like, I mean, I love Texas and I love Florida. I live in California yeah. and I love those states, but our end time strategy can't just be everyone move to those states. Yep. And we'll hold That's out right. in the bunker. That's right. You know, Amen. like we have a call that, that the, the, the gospel and the call of the gospel on our lives is, is, to, is to take ground. It's yeah. not to retreat. And yeah. so I feel like now more than ever, especially the way that a lot of the policies have played out in those cities, people are beginning to wake up and they're like, okay, I feel like hearts are more receptive than they've ever been. I would have never dreamed in my life that we would be seeing the kind of harvest of souls that we're seeing today in America. But when we talk about unity, we're really talking about everybody coming together. What, you've been on the front lines. Why is that so important? Well, I think it's important because, you know, it's like 
<coughs> take, take, take the mandates or the different things, right? If the churches band together and they just were like, you know what, we're not going to do this. There's not enough manpower in the government to shut down every church in America. Yeah, if right. we were united together, we would be a force. If we're, we were united together, we could stop some of this insanity that's happening in, yeah. in America. But what the enemy wants to do and what happened, what's happened through the COVID era is just bring a spirit of division, whether it's race, whether it's, you know, sure. uh, religious, whatever, you know. And I think now more than ever, you know, I say that, you know, only a united church can heal a divided nation. So we got to go back to the things that we're all in agreement with. Jesus is the only hope for America. Amen. Amen. Prayer and worship are essential. The church is essential to get to come together and yeah. pray and worship. And three, no place is too hard and no place is too dark yeah. for the gospel to prevail.